I think we are live. Hey, everyone. Good to see you. Uh, so I am in a completely new studio. Um, I've actually moved house, so it's pretty exciting. I really wanted to. So I'm just trying to like iron out whether I can do more live streams and that sort of thing. I actually quit my full time job. So hopefully I can dedicate a lot more time to this channel, which is super, super exciting. Um, who's in the chat? Anyone here? Hopefully more people start joining. And uh, yeah, so basically I'm, I've, I've moved down um, to a different part of the country, New Zealand. Um, I probably will have a lot more time to spend on this channel. And uh, yeah, so this is the new studio. I can't really show you too much because it's like a one on view, but my whiskey collection's there. Um, so I was thinking I could go through my whiskey collection, but compared to 2021, it's way smaller I mean, sorry, it's way bigger than it was in 2021. Um, as you might have known through all my videos, uh, it's grown a lot. Um, however, I don't actually have my entire whiskey collection here because um, we just staying in this house for six months. It's like my wife's sort of uh, batch, or what do you call it overseas? What do you call it, batch? Holiday home or something. Um, and they're letting us use it for six months. And so half my whiskey collection is actually in storage. So I've kind of like kept the whiskeys that um, I think I might talk about on the channel that I might do reviews of. Um, there's a whole bunch of like other bottles sitting in a box back at uh, our other house, which has uh, been rented out, but we've kind of locked up a bunch of whiskeys and stuff. Hey, everybody. Good to see you all here. Uh, we've got John or Dalmo. Daniel, good to see you. Another Kiwi in the chat. Uh, he came to a whiskey tasting the other night. It was awesome. Hello from Portugal. Hey. Oh, Andrew, you're in. We even got a patron in. Awesome, Andrew. Great to have you in. Hey, Jay. Hey, everyone. So um, I'm actually on coffee at the moment. It is 10 a.m. here in New Zealand. But, I mean, we can still talk about whiskey, can't we? So um, I guess let's just get started with some of my whiskey collections. So, yeah, I'm real excited I just want to talk about the studio a little bit more. I'm real excited to set it all up. Um, I've like got this like little table here where I can um, I can now do like lots of like B-roll. I don't know if any of you saw my like Instagram chat. Uh, I keep looking at myself here. I need to look there because that's where you guys are. Um, so I got this little table where I can shoot like lots of B-roll, take lots of photos, um, which will be real helpful. Hopefully, I've, I kind of want to make my studio super efficient that I can actually pump out videos because I think the big thing with my channel, like I love making videos and stuff, but it's it's a little bit clunky and I, and my upload schedule compared to other YouTubers, you know, it's it's not as much. I'm not uploading as much, but I do really want to like upload those kind of deep dive videos. And so I really need to make the studio as like functional and as efficient as possible. Um, who else we got? Someone from Inverness. Awesome. Hey, Duncan. Hey, Humberto. Hey, Nikeen. Nikeen is in the chat. Another Kiwi, really uh, knowledgeable whiskey guy. Uh, yeah, catch up later. Um, he's, are you at Glengarry at the, at the moment? Um, hey, Andre from Serbia. Good to have you in. Hey, from, hey, Kim from London. Uh, Whereabouts in London? I used to live in London. I lived in uh, Leytonstone. We lived there for four years. And when I lived in London is actually when I got into whiskey. Uh, I do really miss London. Miss the pubs mostly. Like, I think a lot of people, uh, you know, really want to visit New Zealand. New Zealand's great, but we don't have the pubs that they have in the UK. I just love the fact that people bring their families. It's warm. It's cozy. It's just so easy to catch up with people. We kind of have that within cafe culture in New Zealand, but it's just not the same as like the pub culture in the UK. Hey, from Canada, so many, so many people all around the world. Great to have you here. I know this, uh, this, you know, live was like completely last minute, but it's mainly, I want to test it all out because I wasn't really sure does the gear work, does the cable work, does the light work, does the whiskey work, or well, the whiskey definitely works. We know that, don't we? Um, so it's great that you guys can all jump in for this cook live chat. Hopefully we can make this a more regular thing. Um, now that it all seems to be working. Audio good as well? I haven't even checked. All of it. Yeah, hello. Seems good, I think. Um, great. Perfect. 
Perfect. Oh, hopefully we can do more. Um, hopefully we can do more. I need to stop looking at this screen. There's a lot of things. I'm not quite Roy yet. Roy from Equivita. I haven't got my my technique down. Um, you look at you. Maybe if I make my face a bit smaller on this screen. There we go. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just trying to iron those things out, and hopefully we can make the live kind of yeah, I can go live more often on the channel. I, I want to see if that's something that's, you know, I can do on this channel. So anyway, let's start talking about whiskey. So on my shelf up here, I don't know if you can really see it. I've kind of, as I've talked about a lot of my channel, I like to categorize whiskey, not into regions, but into style. And there's only three shelves, so I can only choose three styles. So I've kind of done smoky up top. I've done ex bourbon cask styled i mean some of them will have sherry cask influence but it's kind of that style that lights um although some of them that kind of funky style as well like spring banks and stuff um and is that more spirit forward kind of thing and then i've got my sherry cask uh whiskies down the bottom so yeah let's let's start so what do we got first smoky style um i've got the talisca 10 great Nice whiskey. Uh, the 18-year-old is getting very overpriced at the moment. Um, Diageo do seem to be pushing up their prices across the board. The Lagavulin 16 is just getting outrageous. The 18 is getting really expensive. Uh, the 10-year-old I still think is a, a great, decent, nice malt. I really like the maritime notes you get from Metalliska. Um, and it being 45, is it 45 point? Yeah, it's, it's not quite 46, but it's 45.8, which is yeah, close enough, isn't it? Um, so still solid whiskey. I like it. Smoky. It's not from Isla. It's good to have some few smoky whiskeys, not from Isla. So speaking of that, we've got the Le Chag, Isla Mole. So also not from Isla and smoky. Very good. Very popular. I think this was Ralphie's Whiskey of the Year recently. 46%. I know a lot of you in the chat probably already love this whiskey. Um, it's it's making waves at the moment, and it's really cool to see what Tobermory. So, if you don't know much about Lechag, uh, the owners of Lechag, uh, the Tobermory distiller, Distillery, and they also release like an unpeated whiskey as well. This is the peated expression, and yeah, it's fantastic. Ten year old, unchill filter, natural color. It's got all those like stats that we all like. Um, I'm a big fan. Big fan. I don't know if I actually need my headphones on. I think. That feels a bit better. It's not like I can hear you guys back. Um, now, let's talk about the next one. So, obviously, Port Charlotte 10, classic staple. This is one of my absolute... This probably is my favorite, like, go-to smoky whiskey, actually. Um, 50%. It is a little bit more pricey than some other smoky whiskeys, but, I mean, 50%. and It's, it's tasty. I think... Like the stats can play a part. You know, we talk about 46% natural color and, and that sort of thing. But you can still have a whiskey that meets all the stats and tastes not great. Um, and, you know, vice versa. You can have one that doesn't meet the stats. Um, like I really like the Glen Goyne 18. I'm a huge fan of that. Um, and it doesn't meet all those stats. But I think it's a fantastic, like just expensive though. Um, but this one here meets the stats and is really, really tasty. Absolutely love it. Uh, let's just jump into some comments. Can I ask what your full-time job was? So I was a full-time senior video editor at a, a really cool production company in Auckland called Real Factory. I did lots of TV commercials. If you live in New Zealand, pretty much every Burger King ad that's on TV, I had like edited and stuff. Um, we did like Kia commercials. We did... Um, all sorts of things and yeah i just thought we this opportunity came up that we could come down to this little holiday home for six months and just thought well there's not many like and i got two kids now so i've got a three-year-old and a four-month-year-old and just the opportunity came up that you know maybe we should just try come down and see how it goes and i could spend more time on this channel and it, it's sort of like there's not many times in your life you can take a risk like that because the kids aren't in school yet. We're not pulling them out of school. My wife's on maternity leave. Um, so it just 
seem like a good opportunity. But yeah, um, my background is in video production, mainly in TV commercials and that sort of thing. So that you know, that's where you can kind of see um, where the like editing side comes from. Because I have spent a lot, a lot of time doing videos and editing and documentaries and all that sort of thing. Um, and I and I think you know, like with my history of Scotch video, that was very complimentary. You know, if when you're making a 30 minute video, how do you keep people engaged? Um, there's all sorts of things. Uh, mainly you've got to be passionate. So, and I'm passionate about whiskey. But then, you know, there's a lot of like video techniques and storytelling techniques. Um, I really am inspired by this YouTube channel called Johnny Harris and the way he cuts things. Like, I'd love to do more videos in his style, but like making about whiskey and making it more accessible to like all you guys. And because I did find when I first got into whiskey, it, uh, actually, these days, there's so many great YouTube channels now. But when I first got into it, like there weren't many and there weren't many doing it in the style that you see in other kind of like niches. Like look at the watch niche. If you've ever watched what, you know, it's heaps of them. Beautiful. Um, if you look at like any of the, if you want to video, the video niche on YouTube. Um, if you look at like the tech niche, you know, you think of like Marcus Brownlee and all that sort of thing. But these days, actually, I don't think that's as true as more. You look at some channels like The Whiskey Diary beautiful beautiful looking like set and like yeah the video production side of whiskey channels has gone up by so much you look at campi planet he's a really good editor um great deep dive to japanese whiskeys if you want to look into that um i am blabbering on um i'm gonna say hello to some more people hi from dub i don't even know where i was from london hi from dublin there's <laughs> so many people in here um which is great. Good to have you in. Big fan of the channel. Keep it up. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Breakfast dram for the win. Definitely. Definitely breakfast dram. Or an Irish. Maybe I should make this an Irish coffee. Maybe not, actually. Uh, hey, from Quebec, Canada. Hey, Gabriel. Hey. Oh, I pronounced Jim. Jim. Hey. Hey, Jim. From Turkey. Nice. Hey, from Walthamstow. Not too far. Awesome. That's great. I love Walthamstow. Um, uh, Gold's Own Junkyard. Did you go to Gold's Own Junkyard with like all the pink neon lights? If you guys, if anyone's ever in Lanka, where it's just like all neon lights, awesome, awesome place. So it's cool to see some from there. And Glasgow, we've got so many comments in and no bourbons. Oh, I do actually have some bourbons. Um, the, not many bourbons. I, I, I think I've said this before on my channel that. Bourbon's a little bit harder to get the like fancy stuff like that you'd see on it's bourbon night or something. You know, there's like all those interesting bottles they seem to get. Like we can only really get the mainstream stuff here in New Zealand. And I think it's kind of a shame with bourbon is that bourbon producers seem to be only, unless it's like Jim Beam or something and they're focusing on bars and cocktails, but they only seem to focus on their local market. It's almost like they only think United States is the, is the market. I don't know what it is. We don't, we're Scotch. And maybe that's because Scotland's just a smaller country, so the export market probably plays a much larger role. We get a lot, a lot of good Scotch in New Zealand, um, but in terms of bourbon, I mean, I could show you my ones, but I I've talked about a lot on the channel. You know, you're just your classic um, Elijah Craig and your Wild Turkey and your Rare Breed and that sort of thing. Um, I do want to pick up some more bourbons though, um, but generally. I'm looking mainly at world whiskey. I'm looking mainly at Scotch whiskey. Um, but look, I'm not closed off to bourbon at all. Um, I'd love to do more bourbon stuff. Um, you might have noticed my hair's got a bit longer. I don't know if I'll keep, I might cut it again, but I don't know. I'm asking whiskey people for hair advice. It's a bit weird. Um, let's catch up. Love your content. Thanks, Thomas. Uh, Liam, another Londoner. Can I ask, what was your full-time job? No, I've already read these comments. The 18 was such a letdown. Yeah, the Talisker 18 is, for the price, I mean, look, if someone gave me a dram of the Talisker 18, I'd be like, sweet, this is great. But if I had to pay, what, is it like $280 here in New Zealand or something? No, <laughs> there's so many other great whiskeys that I would get before that. Um Whiskey on the West Coast, Lechega is such a champion quality and Pete. Agree. It's just a fantastic go-to. I can see where the hype is now. I can see why so many people just love it. And it's cool because 
um, you kind of need this pressure on Isla so they don't get too comfortable. You know, look at Bowmore these days and like the Bowmore 12, I had a bottle and I really wasn't impressed, to be honest. Um, I know there's some really good Bowmores out there, but it's it's nice to see these nice smoky whiskeys coming out, putting pressure on Isla, like, you know, at really, like with really good stats. And the other one with a really good stat that I got to talk about after some more caffeine. Um, is the the lag, which if I can find it, where was it? I have lost it. I've got the box. No, it's right. It's right next to me. <laughs> you guys will probably go and it's right next to him. Um. Lag. We got to talk about the lag. It's this whiskey. Um, so I think I I think I had some of the earlier batches and I was like, oh yeah, cool. It's cool to see where it's going. Batch three, this one it's aged in um some red wine cask. I'll see if I can get you a close up on that. The light works. Maybe not. Um fantastic. So the owners who own lag are the same owners who run Aaron, and you look at how amazing Aaron has done and how much like the whiskey community has got behind Aaron. Lag is fascinating because it's the same owners. So they're putting that same like dedication and like love into the spirit. But what's really cool is they're taking them in two really different directions. Aaron, if you watch my stills video, you would have seen like how this, you know, if you have a taller still and if you have a big bulb and, you know, you encourage more reflux, you're going to get a lighter spirit. And that's what Aaron's doing. You've got those, that light fruity orchard fruit toffee apple like really nice and so lag they've kind of they're doing kind of the opposite thing um i better just keep it off the chat just in case sound goes out or something but like the lag there's still like there's no bulb and it's like real fat at the bottom and it, it gives you a really heavy spirit and, you, and you, when i say heavy you know there's that characterful lots of personality think of whiskeys like the Ben Romick, the Craig Allerkey, those real like heavy ones, but you're crossing that kind of like heavy spirit over with like some smoky whiskey. And then what I like, um, you know, it's kind of almost like a long row. Uh, wherever that is. I really need to learn where my whiskey is now, my new studio. Um, yeah. You know, this is Springbank's like smoky whiskey, and it's the same thing. It's heavy. It's it's got personality. It's got character. And what's really cool is I, my leg is. I wouldn't say it's like it's like a Springbank or anything, but it it has it just has lots of character and personality and all sorts of things going on. Um, it's probably my most like anticipated, closely watched distillery now. Like after I bought this bottle, I was like, huh, I need to like. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what Lag's doing. I, like, I feel like in five years' time, this is the one that could win like the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards or something. It's really, really interesting. Um, have any of you had a Lag? Um, I'm just gonna say hello, a few people. Glengoyne 18 is a banger. Yeah, it is right, and it's 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 a it's a whiskey. Like, it doesn't get much love like within whiskey geeks and whiskey enthusiast communities because it, it doesn't have like full natural presentation but the actual spirit quality under that whiskey is fantastic and it's a whiskey as well it's one of my whiskeys where like if i had no budget like i spend as much as i want and i had someone who'd never drunk whiskey before or maybe just had you know the odd whiskey and you said okay give me three whiskeys that to convert them to scotch you know i'm gonna pick something like a Dalwini 15 I'm going to pick, and then like a Glengoyne 18. I've given it to people who don't drink much whiskey, and they're like, this is really, really good. Um, look, it's not going to be like super like punch you in the face or anything, but I, and it's expensive, but I think it's good. So it's cool to hear your whiskey club like it as well. Um, that's what Thomas was saying. Congrats for the family. Thank you, Mark. Uh, hey from Nelson. Good to see you. Unfortunately, yeah, I thought a lot of you Kiwis will be off to work. Um, Great to have you in. Hello to Nelson. I need to come to now down to Nelson. I you guys have a really cool little whiskey um shop down there, right? And I think you did a great job forging an identity on this channel. Love it. Thank you, Gabriel. 
I appreciate that. Thank you. Hopefully, my biggest issue is I don't put out enough content. I think I've only put out like 50 videos and you look at like the Whiskey Tribe or Ralphie and it's like in the thousands. Um, I do wonder what would happen if I output more content. Um, oh, Markson. <laughs> hey, Mac, how are you going? Bit of grading. Mark was the, uh, he's the color grader. Um, I'm actually going to be seeing him this weekend, which is fantastic. We're going down to Queenstown. He also, um, it's the same company I worked at. We just worked on all sorts of awesome stuff. He's the guy to ask about what we did. It's uh, it's really, really cool. And hello from Loose Cannon. Greetings from Germany. Nothing better to do at midnight. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. There's so many, um, on my stats, I feel like, you know, the top countries who watch my channel, it's like US, UK, and then it's Germany. There's a lot of, it's, it's, whiskey seems a big thing in Germany. Although I don't know many like German whiskey, I, I don't think there's many distilleries there, but it seems like there's a lot of consumers who really, really into scotch and like in a really deep way as well. Um, so it's really cool to have you guys over. Hey, Budapest. Hey, hey, uh, and some from Argentina, Argentina, I'm going to. I'm just, look, I'm a Kiwi. I've got a terrible accent. I'm, I'm not going to pronounce your names perfectly, um, but Al Tin, Tin Cho, um from Argentina. Good to have you in. And Alan Gray, greetings from the Scottish borders. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Prime Whiskey. Hello, Whiskey in the West Coast. Nice. Hey. Hey, Bob. How's it going? Hey, John. Drinking a high malt bourbon right now. Awesome. Chatter Noonga 111. Delicious. Never had it, but it sounds awesome. Do you train any of the Isla Festival with special releases? No. The last three weeks, I've been packing boxes. I have been getting the studio ready. We've been trying to move kids down the country. I've been driving around. Like it's just been like just chaotic. Part of the reason why the output of my channel um has, you know, hasn't been great recently. I thought it would be start of the year. I was like, I'm gonna do lots more videos and then this move came along, but now I feel like I can get myself set up, make some lives more regular thing. I love to hear from you guys what you want to see in a live as well. Like, should I follow a topic? Should we have guests on? Um, it'll be cool to hear what you guys think of that. Um, oh man, there's there's so many comments now. I don't know if I can catch up with all that. Is that lag whiskey any good? Fantastic. Yeah. I think this comment's a little bit uh I think I'm a little bit behind. Would love more content from for you. Thank you. Um, truth. No, there's lots of German and Scotch whiskey channel. What is a, a whiskey Jason? That's a whiskey Jason. Yeah, he's great. Real deep. Like some of the bottles he's got. Like the, oh. it's just absolutely super rare bottles. Really cool. I really like his like deep dives and videos and stuff. Um, okay, let's talk about some more whiskey. couple more everyone knows these um mainly because i i feel like i don't just want to talk about whiskey that only like the, the pinnacle like geeks know you know because not everyone has big whiskey budget so i do like to have those like those famous whiskeys that everyone knows um always on the shelf always to talk about because they're a great reference point a lot of them are good places to start and the frog 10 is one of those it just there's lots of points where I need to talk about on the channel. So part of my collection is kind of turning a lot into a library. But there are some consequences of me having a library. You know, I did that whole video on like, does whiskey last? And you should put it in little bottles if it gets too low. I'm I'm, I'm a complete hypocrite. All my bottles are getting really, really low. Um, you look at the Lafroig, like it's super, super low. Um, so, uh, But I like to keep it on the shelf. Um, because, yeah, there's just so many opportunities to talk about in the video. I'll probably do a little review of it soon. Again, it's that whiskey that got me into whiskey. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, it's, it's it's got this really interesting, like, medicinal note that you don't get in other, like, peated whiskeys. Um, and, yeah, uh, these days not drinking as much of the Lafroy 10, drinking a little bit more of the quarter cask, a little bit more punchy. It's 48%. Uh, Lafroy Lore, that one's great. Um, I didn't bring, that's one of the whiskeys that I left behind. I didn't actually bring that one. Um, and yeah, there's some car strength offerings now. So I think Lafrog's still good. I just, I, I wish there was just like a standard. I feel like if I owned a distillery 
I think I'd probably still just do like a beginner. You do a beginner's release at like, I don't know. And I think this is kind of what Aaron do and uh, what Dean's didn't do. Like just have your beginner whiskey, super mellow, 40%. And then you have like your hero whiskey, your 46% natural color, aren't you filtered? And then you have a bunch of special releases and older whiskeys. I just wish, like, imagine if Lafroig had like a 12 year old that came out as one of their standard bottlings at 46% unchill filtered natural color. I just think a lot of us would be talking about Lafroig a lot more. And, um, and I guess that's kind of what the quarter cask is. Um, but I think for a lot of distilleries, yeah, that's that's probably what I would do if I ran a distillery. Um, make a live tasting with people who have never had scotch in their life and pour them your favorites. Yeah, that's a video I really want to do. And as I was saying before, like um, if I had three whiskeys to try and – I really want to see if it works. Like there's a few whiskeys I think – like if you – you know, some whiskeys you just don't know, but some whiskeys I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm pretty confident you might like this. Um, so I just need to find the talent um, that wants to come on. Uh, my wife definitely doesn't want to come on and she does not like whiskey. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just need someone who doesn't know heaps about whiskey, get them on for a live. I think, or, or yeah, I think it'd be an interesting thing. And, and also like if they don't like the whiskey, then I could like go through the whiskey collection and kind of like adapt to their palate and see which direction I would go. Um, I do think, you know, we've all got different palettes. Some people like the smoky, some like the sherry. Um, let's talk about some more whiskeys. Let's get all these out. Right, we're going to smash through these. Everyone knows this one now if you watch my videos. Ben Romick, Pete's Smoke, Sherry Cask Matured. It was my top winter whiskey last year. Still, it, I love it. It's really good. It's got that real kind of characterful personality, like funky note, um, plus the smokiness. I like it. It's just... It's the opposite to like an Altmore 12 or a Glen Cadam 10. It's just like, just character. Um, it's not subtle. I'd beg 10 and the Ugadau, I'm sure you guys know these. 10 is just like the, what do you, I think Roy calls it the guardian of Isla. And I, I think it is. It's the classic Isla malt. Um, 46%. It's really good. It's mainly, um, I think it's, I think it's all ex-bourbon cask forward, whereas the Ugadel is the kind of cask strength. I'm not sure if it's officially cask strength, but it's 54.2%, and it has some sherry cask influence. This is a lot of people's favorites um, from Ardbeg. Can't talk about Peter Whiskey here unless you talk about some New Zealand whiskey. Uh, the Moss, this is, uh, I need to work out how I can light the bottles and do like the bottle showing thing. Um, this is the moss. It's um, New Zealand peat. Very different to Isla peat. Um, I wish you guys, more of you could get your hands on it. They have just upgraded the still. If you go online and you Google Waiheke whiskey and you look at like the shape of the still, they have a the geometric still. Really interesting. I'm really excited about where they're going. And hopefully now with the new large still, their output will increase and they can get into more markets and get to you guys, as I've seen from the chat, all around the world. Uh, yeah. Now, oh, poor Charlotte PAC. This is like probably my favorite smoky whiskey I own. Uh, it's expensive, but it's really delicious. Just, just love it. Um, 56.1%. I like this more than Octomore. Um, so it's great. It's an eight year old. So uh, Port Charlotte do like special releases, like special cask releases. And this one I think is aged in a Pouillac cask, which is in the French wine region of Bordeaux. It is left bank, right bank, right? This is it right bank. I think it's on the north of the, anyway. If you know anything about Bordeaux wine, there's like two banks. One's, they both do Bordeaux blends, um, which means that it's not just one grape, it's kind of a mixture of grapes. So on one side of the bank, it's kind of a mixture of grapes, but it's mainly Merlot forward. And on the other side of the bank, it's a mixture of grapes, but it's mainly uh, Cabernet Sauvignon forward. And I can't remember what Pouillac is. But it's more Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon. Anyway, it's a wine cask. It's really interesting. I think, I think, I think in like some like whiskey meme pages and stuff, they talk about how uh, wine, like 
you know, like some distilleries just like chucking in a wine cast to make it like interesting stuff. And maybe they are, maybe, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're doing it because maybe the spirit's not great and they're just trying to like chuck it in something interesting to try and get people to buy it. But I'm actually a huge fan of exploring wine casts. I don't think we fully know which wine casts work really well with whiskey yet. Like, um, well, Hickey Whiskey did a one with Chardonnay. Fantastic. Really good. Um, and so, you know, like the traditional things we age them, like she, we know sherry works with whiskey and a sherry cask. We know that works, but we don't know, like, what about a Carmen year from Chile? Like that wine, it's a real heavy, like wine, like that's my favorite grape. Does that work with whiskey? I don't know. I don't know. And it depends on the spirit. Like it might work with some, with some distilleries and it might not work with others. So I'm really keen. Uh, I'm really excited about them exploring. I'm sure in like 25 years, we'll kind of narrow down those like those certain wines that work really well with whiskey. I know Solturn is a big one. That's another Bordeaux one. It's a sweet wine. Um, you get those pineapple kind of notes and stuff. It's like a desserty sort of wine. And that works really well, really well with, um, really well with whiskey. So yeah, I just hope that we can narrow down more of that. Anyway, next whiskey. Okay, last of the smoky whiskeys. Oh, Moss not available. Damn. Yeah, I didn't think it would be. If you do come to New Zealand, um, do pick a bottle up. So, uh, picked up two bottles of Caravec in it last year before the price was jacked up. Yeah, so that's a big theme this year. Um, whiskey prices are going up. And I think this really is why we... Um, I really want to focus on affordability. Like, as you'll notice in my collection, there's some great bottles. But none of them are those like two thousand dollar Macallans or so. I don't know. I'm, that's not really me. I'm not really into those collectible whiskies. I'm into whiskey for drinking. Um, the flavor, the taste. Um, I don't know if any of you guys saw the Whiskey Tribe's recent video about uh, how they tasted a bunch of non-alcoholic spirits. So it was like non-alcoholic rum, non-alcoholic gin, non-alcoholic beer. And the big theme of it was that it's just not, not great. I think beer and gin are probably the best, but like non-alcoholic whiskey. And that's a, there's a reason for that. And that's because ethanol bonds to the flavor molecules. Ethanol carries flavor. And that's why whiskey, in my view, is the most complex drink you can get. It's super, super complex. And it's why I love whiskey. I, I, I think wine is very complex, but I think with spirit, you know, it's a much higher strength there's just so many layers and things going on. And that's why I'm really excited about whiskey. I don't even know why I started talking about. I was talking about that. Anyway, let's talk about some more whiskeys. Uh, Lagavulin 16. Everyone knows this whiskey. Um, like the Talisker 18, I think it's getting a little bit overpriced. It's a shame because it's such a famous, it's so loved by everybody. I think I think most people have been into whiskey for a while will feel nostalgic for Lagavulin 16, and I do too. Um you know, it's like no matter how bad they get, I'm still like, oh yeah, but it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Um, and look, I'm not saying it's bad as in like it's good whiskey; it tastes great. I just think the price value, us talking about affordability again, it's it's not really one of those ones I recommend a lot now um, for beginners to go. I, like for beginners, before I was just like, get the Lagavulin 16. It's a more gentle peat than the Lafroy or the Arbeg, um, but not so much anymore. Um, and I think it's kind of a theme with Diageo recently. Thompson, Manuka Smoke, another New Zealand whiskey. I don't know if you guys overseas can get this. This one is fascinating. I've got the full noise here. It's the car strength. So if you watch my Peter video, you would have seen that, you know, when you burn peat and the smoke rises and infuses with the barley, um, you know, that, and then it goes through the whole whiskey making process. That's how it works. This one, they burn Manuka wood. And Manuka wood is a New Zealand native tree. And they use it often to smoke fish. So it's really cool that the distillers have thought, well, hey, this works with other foods. Let's smoke some barley with manuka chips and manuka wood. Um, so that's what, what it's about, manuka smoke. I really need to sort out this. Yeah, it's great. Um, just going to quickly jump in. Rioja cask finish on Le Chag works perfect. Yes, I have heard that. Uh, G Whiskey did a really good video on that, um, I think. G Whiskey. Um, yeah, it's on my like wish list on my like shopping cart. Um, I just need to, yeah, 
it seems really good, that Rioja cask. Um, I'm a huge fan of Rioja wine, so it's really cool. There's another good one to see people testing different casks out. I'm actually, I'm very pro innovation. Um, I know some people are a little bit more like, no, nah, no, nah, you just got to have these bourbon casks and, you know, a little bit more purist. I'm a little bit more on the side of like, nah, let's innovate. We don't know what's good yet. Like if someone makes a bad whiskey and puts it in a cask and it doesn't work, fine. But I think overall for the industry, if we start to figure out what casks really work, um, I'm really pro that. So a Rioja cask working well with Le Chag is awesome. I'm a huge fan of Rioja. That's a Spanish wine, by the way, the Rioja uh, wine region. I think you could pronounce it Rioja or Rioja. I think you can do it both ways, but I'm sure all you Spanish guys in the chat will correct me on that. Um, Pico wine is a wine from a different island of Portugal. Oh, fascinating. That would be interesting. Yeah, see that kind of stuff. I want to see, like, I'm a big fan of all that. Um, have I missed? Uh, we have got Yoichi. I've had this on the shelf for way too long. It's again, it's just ended up sort of becoming a library whiskey for me. It's also very low. Uh, this is a Japanese whiskey. It's smoky. It's 45%. It's great. I like it. I do like the Yoichi. Um, and as, I, as I've talked about before, Japanese whiskey is pretty overpriced these days. Uh, hopefully now if all the production increases, um, prices will start to go down. Uh, it's just not one I'm really reaching for much. I think like 10 years ago, you know, like 2013, like Japanese whiskey was on fire. Like it was awesome. Like you can get so many good bottles at good prices. But then it, kind of the hype, we took it too far and everything just kind of sold out and what was left has become pretty unreachable. Um but I don't think that would be forever. The, the, the distillers know that there is a love for Japanese whiskey and they have really increased production. So um, I'm really keen to kind of see the return, the return of Japanese whiskey. Japanese whiskey strikes back. Um, great. Let's talk about some more. I'll just put all these bottles away. Uh, so now we're going to talk about... Some of the sherry cask influenced whiskies. No, yes. Yeah, actually, good conversation point. I want to talk about how there's now two errands, two errands. Just uh, give me one second. Where's the other errand? What have I done with the other errand? Here it is. So I thought this might be an interesting point for you guys. Um, X Whiskey Fest, Dram Fest. At Dram Fest in New Zealand, um, I met the marketing. What do you what do you call them? Ambassador? Aaron Ambassador? See if you can notice a difference between these two Aaron's. Aaron Eighteens. So oh, let's make more light. I need a bit more light. What I need is like got Charles McLean's thing, whiskey book here. Help with that out. So you can kind of see that color. And we know there's a natural color, right? So there's no color in added. And that color, there is quite a difference in the colors of these two errands. So this one I bought like two years ago. This one I bought like six months ago. Because Aaron, and I don't know if this is the YouTube community, or I'm sure there's a lot more things. Um, Aaron is running out of sherry casks, and so they're flicking their 18 to be a little bit more like the 10-year-old. It's going to be a little bit more ex-bourbon cask forward. So the recent one is much more like your orchard fruit forward rather than like, oh, I did love the Aaron, the old Aaron 18 was with the sherry cask influence. It was, it was almost like a richer fruit mixed with that orchard fruit. Um, but apparently, like, they use too many sherry casks. They're like, they they basically release these casks and like, oh, we released too much because Aaron's becoming super popular. Um, I guess they didn't anticipate how popular Aaron would get. So I think for a while, the Aaron 18 is going to be, this is what she was saying, the Aaron 18 is going to be a little bit more ex-bourbon cask forward. So here's one for you guys watching. Um, if you have an Aaron 18 at your local bottle store and you know it's been getting a bit dusty and it got dust on it and it's a little bit more red in color, I would pick it up because you won't see these Aaron 18s anymore. The more sherry cask influenced ones are becoming a lot more ex-bourbon cask influenced. Still great. They're both great. Like I, I, this one's not 
this was not bad by any stretch. Um, I did prefer this one, though. But you know, if you buy an Air 18, you're going to have a good experience. Let's be honest. Um, <clears throat> right. So, yeah, kind of interesting thing. That's kind of more experiment cast, experiment cast, theory cast. Still got some more. Um, <clears throat> Actually, I lie. This is not my sherry cask shelf. This is actually more and more experiment cask. Everyone knows Glen Cadam 10 by now. Um, the design is very humble, I feel like. Like, it doesn't really say much, but it's uh, just so good. It's my favorite, probably, summer whiskey, um, 46%. And for most of you guys in Northern Hemisphere, I think this will be a good one to have right now when it's hot. Uh, Loch Lomond, really interesting whiskey. Got a lot of personality. Um, I feel like it's slightly underrated, this whiskey. Um, I know more and more people are talking about it, but I feel like a lot of people still haven't tried the Loch Lomond 12-year-old. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's it's kind of a whiskey that it's a little bit divisive. I think you do kind of love it or hate it. It has slight farmy notes. Um, it's got this kind of astringent note. Um, and But it's also like really fruity as well. But it has like sort of character, that personality that you find in the Craig Allocky, that you find in the Ben Romick. Um, so some people I don't think will like it. Some people I really do think will like it. But it's a really interesting malt. There's stills. If you ever if you Google Loch Lomond stills, they're actually real fascinating. Like, you know, you have the pot. If you watch my pot stills video, you have the pot still. You have the column still. And they have like, Loch Lomond have like this weird still where it's like straight. It's like a straight pot still. And it kind of just right angle goes off into the line arm. Like most pot stills have this kind of beautiful kind of swan arm sort of thing. Um, they do have pot stills as well, but I think some of the stills they have there are that kind of like they call it the Loman still, I think, and it just goes like straight. So, and I think that gives us that sort of characterful kind of like um, background you find in it. All right, let's go. I would say even more underrated than the Glen Cannon 10 would be this one here, the Altmore 12. I'm a big fan of it. Really light, 46% anti filter, natural color, all on the label. Really good, light, easy, summery whiskey. It's one of those whiskeys that I've kind of come to appreciate more later in my whiskey journey. At the start, I was like, I just want basic kind of like easy drinking whiskeys. In the middle of my whiskey journey, I was kind of like, I want the most powerful most sherry, most smoky whiskey I can possibly get, most car strength. And now I'm coming back to like, I don't want a simple whiskey, but it's like there's something nice about that subtle complexity. Um, and I think this is one of them. It's subtly complex. Like, so when you first sip it, you might just think, oh, yeah, nice. But if you let it breathe, you give it time in the glass, like there's lots of layers behind it and lots of things going on. Um, it's great. Underrated. Uh, I think most of the whiskey goes in blends, so which is why you don't see many bottles of the Altmore. Um, but it is one worth trying out if you like that style, that light ex bourbon cask spirit forward, like white fruit style. You might like the Altmore. Um, another underrated one, but made popular by Roy from Equavite recently. Um, it's very good. I'm getting some messages. Um, Spayburn 15. Great whiskey, really like it. I can see why there's hype around it. 46% again, Unchill Filter. This one is coloured, which is interesting because the sister distillery, I think, is... Am I right about this? I'm not sure. The sister distillery is Glen Scotia, and their 15-year-old, also Unchill Filtered, also 46%, but they also colour. So I think there's something, I guess, in the company, maybe they can't get it across the line to take out the colouring. Um... Great whiskey, underrated. Um, you know, a lot of people saw it as a bottom shelf whiskey up until recently. And I think now people are sort of like having a second look and going, oh, actually, no, this is not bad at all. Right, let's go through some more comments and see what you guys are saying. Um, Douglas Lang blends. Yeah, definitely. They're fantastic. I think if Douglas Lang for... David is saying here I've been digging a lot of Douglas Lang um, blends lately. Douglas Lang, for those who don't know, is an independent bottler. They are ones who buy casks from distilleries and then they kind of release it at their own specs and how they want to do, you know, how they want to present it. Um, and they're a good one. I'm not buying too many 
um, oh, and you were talking about blends, blend and malts. Yeah, so there's some really good blend and malts. Um, blend and malts are really interesting. I think traditionally there's kind of like, uh, I guess a lot of us into single malt, you know, we think of blends and we think, oh, no, that's just tame, basic cocktail mixing kind of whiskey. Like, you know, we look at Johnny Walker and Shivas and all that sort of thing. But blended malt is different. Um, so you've got blended whiskey, you've got blended malt. Blended mixes, uh, it's got a mixture of column steel and pot steel. Blended malt is just a mixture of single malt whiskeys from different distilleries. And it's really cool because what the master blender can do is make a recipe. Like they're cooking a recipe and they can come up with like really cool things. And that's what Compass Box does really well. Douglas Lang um, does some really good blended malts as well. So it is something to keep an eye out if you haven't had many blended malts. Um, hello from uh, Adna Merkin will be a star in the future in my opinion alongside the lag agree, agree, let's talk about it Adna Merkin is one that just came in I guess I can't, what can I compare it to, it's almost not since the era, like it just came in just uh, it's such a high level and I think it says a lot about the makers of Adna Merkin, the experience they've brought to the table, like they're not like these distillers who kind of figuring things out as they go. It's like you can see there's already a lot of experience. So the early whiskies that are not even that old, fantastic, really, really nice. Um, it's probably not my style. Over, I probably don't love it as much as some other people, but I can definitely, I do like it, obviously. You can see how much I'm getting through this car strength bottling of Ardner Merkin. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Ardner Merkin is a new distillery. They're really like... Yeah, it's one to watch. It's like the lag. It's one to watch. Um, I think people are watching this now, now, though. I wouldn't say it's underrated. I think out of all, like, the new distilleries, this is, you know, I'd say this would be top three most that most people have an eye on. Um, they're doing really good stuff. Really engaged with the community as well. I really like – it's really cool to see distilleries that, you know, they're open to coming – Cot the Rob from Cotswolds is like this too. He's really good. It's cool to see people get engaged with the whiskey community online. I think a lot of distilleries, <clears throat> they're kind of behind like a marketing wall. You know, they don't engage with you. They don't, you know, like it, it's, you know, it feels very corporate. And um, I think what Arden Merck can do really well is not only do they make great whiskey, but they're really good at engaging their audience and, um, you know, um, talking to – engaging like on people's live streams and you know like he's, he's been on um Arthur Merkin have been on like dram face and stuff it's really cool that they're just open to you know chatting with the people who are actually buying the whiskey so it's it's really good I feel like so many other stories just seem I don't know they're just behind like uh their billboards and their and their like posts and I don't know it just feels kind of a bit personality -less. Um, so that's what I really like from Cotswolds as well. Rob actually going out, he started his own podcast as well. It's really cool to see that. I'm a big fan of that. It's cool to see distilleries embracing new media <clears throat> and not just doing these, this old style media. Um, I don't know what you guys think of that. Will you save this live? I guess so, if it's worth it. I don't know, is this interesting? <laughs> this live is kind of a test. I'm just trying to test the setup. So, But if it's interesting, I'll save it, I'll post it, and you know, other people can watch it later. Um, yeah, I'd American. I need a good. This is the thing about um, whiskey collection videos. There's a lot of whiskeys. Dow only 15 talked about a lot. My favorite whiskey to give to people who don't drink whiskey. Great. Um, not super cheap, but like if you, if I have someone coming over and I'm like, oh, what's scotch like? Um, this is the one I'm going to because 15 year old, it's in a cold climate. Um, it's one of the highest distilleries in Scotland. And when you're in a cold climate, the age of the cast breathes slower. But this is an old cast, 15 year old. So it's almost like, uh, you know, it's like a, uh, it's like the difference between, you know, like an, I'd say like an Indian whiskey, which ages really quickly, is like a steak. It's like a it's like a char grilled steak. You know, you're in full flames. Whereas this is like your slow cooked pork. You know, um, it's been in the slow cooker for. A day or two and you know it's, it's just it's not better or worse but i do find this gives it a very gentle character like the the cask influence has just been um it's 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 been introduced 
and like very slowly and so it's, it's, there's no sort of like yeah that's why it's one of my favorite ones Glen Levitt licensed dram really cool to see big distilleries releasing whiskies that whiskey geeks like um I talked a lot about licit still licensed dram I'm a huge fan of it um first fill casks first fill now you know the name of the channel first fill first fill is the first uh when I use a cask that um basically for the first the first time scotch is put into a cask before the after the previous spirit uh, 48%. Really fan of this. I'd love to see other distilleries, big distilleries doing what the Glen Levitt is doing with this bottling. Like imagine like, like you know, Glen Fittick. Um, you know, think about all these at Dalmore. Uh, you know, imagine if they all did 48% unchill filtered whiskies. It'd be great. Actually, this one I don't know if it is unchill filtered. The illicit still was written on the bottle, but it's not written there. I think I feel like I need to talk to someone at Glen Levitt because I'm not Really sure about it. Great whiskey, though. Aaron Team, we all know about this. It won Whiskey of the Year for the Oswiz um, Online Scotch Whiskey Awards two years ago. Great whiskey. A lot of people love Aaron. It's great. Cotswolds, as I was talking about, and I've actually still got tape on it from the trip, from me moving studio. Um, 46%. I really, really like Odyssey. If I was again for you guys in the northern hemisphere, if you want a summer whiskey, Cotswold's a good place to go. Lots of like it's very fruit forward, it's got this really nice tropical notes. Love it. I'm very excited about Cotswolds. And I just feel like the branding makes sense. Like Cotswolds, you think of Cotswolds, it's like this beautiful countryside town. Like, you know, it's not Isla, it's not like harsh, like boggy, kind of windy place. It's like nice old, you know, they shoot lots of like old films there and stuff. Um, so it's like, yeah, you can see when you imagine that and you imagine what would the whiskey taste like from there? It's kind of what you think it would be. It's gentle. It's nice. It's fruity, but it's not boring. It's cool. That's what I like. Deanston 12, Craig Ellicke. Deanston 12, another classic malt, really good. Same owners as Bernahaven, uh, 46%. Until for all the things we like, great ex bourbon cask forward whiskey. It's like when people say, What's a great, like non sherry, non smoky whiskey? This is often a go to along with Aaron. Um, this is the one I sort of say, like, Look, if you want to try scotch, Deanston is a good place to go. Um, if you're really used to drinking whiskey and you want to kind of take that level up, um, really good. Craig Gallicky, really funky. I used to hate this whiskey, <laughs> hated it, like, I thought it was disgusting. Um, now it's one of my favorite whiskeys, and that's. Big thing about whiskey, your palate changes as you go through your journey. This is a 46% um, unchill filter natural color, yes. And uses worm tubs. It has a real funky character whiskey with lots of personality. Um, you know, a lot like a lot like the spring bank and um, Ben Romack and that sort of thing. Great. I. How long have we been going now? 15 minutes. I think just over an hour. So I don't think I'll talk about anything. I'll try and punch through a few more things. Um, to be honest, I don't know actually much about this distillery. It's the Glen Glasser. Uh, this one is just a single cask one. Um, apparently they're going to release a standard bottling now. Like this one's 58.9%. It's a nine year old. Uh, really good. Love it. Huge fan of this. Um, it's one of those whiskeys that I didn't really buy like for the channel because I don't know how many people can get access to this, but I thought I've never really had a glass of before. So um, when I picked up, it's an interesting bottle, single cask, really like it. Another a lot of Waiheke whiskeys at the moment. This one's a Sweetwater. It's kind of like the entry-level whiskey. Really good if you want to try like New Zealand whiskey and you don't want to go – you know, it's the one you give people who don't drink a lot of whiskey. It's great. It's just a good, like, cool, good uh, starting place to see where New Zealand whiskey's at. Springbank 10, obviously, very hard to get hold of. Uh, thank you to Colin for reaching out to me and helping me buy a bottle. <laughs> it's not me. You can't find many places in New Zealand. Um, so it's great. It's super famous. Um, you know, Springbank is from the Campbelltown region. I don't know if I need to talk about too much. I feel like you guys know Spring Bank. Just an entry level, Glenmorangie 10. This is not really a whiskey I drink that much of, but another one I can put in cocktails. Um, it's also just one that I feel like I still need to talk about on my channel because a lot of people know, you know, 
people who don't know whiskey, if they know like, but they know a few bottles, this is probably one of them they know. Um, Glen Morangy, like a, not, yeah, I'm not drinking too much of the beginner whiskey, but stuff like the Signet, I don't know if you've seen Sig Signet, um, great, great luxury whiskey. Let's move some of these. I think I'll just talk about like five more whiskies, otherwise the stream will just go on and on and on. Um, I'm going to talk about the Tullamore. This is a really fascinating underrated whiskey. I've heard really, really mixed reviews about it, but it kind of perked my interest after um, a couple of people talked about it, but also it has new owners, the Elixir Distillers, who are also starting a new distillery on Isla. So Isla's going to have so many distilleries now. I think there's now like 12, if you include the planned ones. Uh, one of them is called the P P Petruin, Petru Petruin, and they, the owners, Alexa, also have bought Tormor. Um, really interesting whiskey, unchilled filter, natural, I don't know if it is natural color, but it's 48%. Um, this is a whiskey I think most of you probably haven't had. I can be pretty confident with that. It's not one you see a lot, but I managed to get it in New Zealand. I've heard some people say they don't really like it. Some people say they love it. So I bought a bottle of make my own opinion. Um, I like it. It's kind of a mix between that kind of like fruit forward orchard fruit and the like dried astringent, like a Glen Tyre at 12. It's kind of a crossover, those two kind of two flavor profiles. I really like it. Let's go. Ikra de Dor. Um, they used to market themselves as the smallest distillery. I don't know if that's true anymore. I mean, there's so many new distilleries. Um, really good whiskey. This one is an absolute sherry bomb. Um, it's aged solely in sherry cast. Ecuador is another sort of underrated whiskey. Um, there, it does have a cult following. Now there are certain people who just absolutely love it. Um, uh, let's talk about Cadrona, another New Zealand whiskey. Um, these little bottles are quite expensive, but Cadrona is like if you just look at the spirit. It is really good. I think it's world class. Like, um, it's as good as any of the best Scotch distilleries. Um, next year or the year up, when they get to the age they can release a 10 year old, they're going to start releasing full kind of bottled whiskey, 700 ml, probably 46%. But they're only releasing kind of car strength little bottles at the moment. So it's almost like this car. Like, I think the idea behind it was that we're following their kind of like, it's like we're like the distiller, like we're following the kind of cask evolution until they reach that 10-year-old age. Um, so every year they've done like they did uh, first year, they did just hatch and there's growing wings and then there's full flight. And full flight is really interesting. I really like it. I had a little sample they gave me actually. Yeah, full flight here. Um, really, really good. I'm really impressed by it. Um, I just hope they can bring the prices down when they release a full bottling and they can do output. Um, I guess they have to pay the bills. You know, starting distillery is not cheap. So I think the first whiskies that have come out have been quite expensive. But hopefully that's not going to be the case forever because I think once they get going, they can start selling like a regular bottle. Hopefully those prices can come down a little bit. Um, but I do think it is a premium malt of New Zealand whiskey. Like it is it's very good, very well made. Like they're doing things. It's not just some in a garage thing, it's like legit. If you Google Cadrona, I think it's probably the most beautiful location for a distillery I've ever seen. It's in the mountains, if you ever visit New Zealand. Beautiful place to visit. Um, it's opposite a ski field, if you like skiing. Um, and, but they have proper big stills and all that sort of thing. Like, it's proper, copper, you know, they're doing it properly. Um, they're not, like, cutting costs and stuff. Like, they're doing it, you know, a good way. Um... Irish whiskey, yes. What have we got? Strangely, I didn't bring a lot of my Irish whiskey. It's all sitting in a box because, um, again, I've moved studio. This is a new studio, and I couldn't bring all my whiskeys just because it would have filled up the whole entire car. Uh, so all I've got here is just like a fundamental Red Breast 12. I think you guys know this by now. It's really good. Great starter whiskey. The Cow Street one's really good. Very pricey though these days. What I'm really keeping an eye on now is like the Dingle. Um, that's a really nice Irish whiskey, but I'm I'm keen to get more into Irish whiskey. I need to 
relook at it and explore it more. Um, I'd love to at some point do like an Irish whiskey deep dive thing like I did for History of Scotch. Um, yeah. So anyway, I think we'll do one more and then we'll wrap it up. Let's talk about... Yeah, let's, let's talk about the Anok, 18-year-old. Ralphie just reviewed this recently. One of the best value 18-year-olds I think you can get. Um, I think it's underrated, although it's getting more recognition now. Um, I really like that on the marketing, there's nothing like, we have the exceptional care of our casts and we use the finest casts, you know, that sort of stuff. Like, you know, you get a little bit kind of over that. Like, that's just marketing jargon. Like, anyone can say that. Um, this one, to the point. This is like the opposite. This is like natural color, until filtered on the back label. Gives you some tasty notes. And that's kind of it. And to the point that it's almost too simple. It almost looks, I, I wouldn't mind if they redesigned it actually, because it looks a little bit like something you get from a pharmacy. Because um, it's just like, this is what we do. Uh, but yeah, that's great. In terms of content, I love it. I love it like when they're thinking about the people who are drinking the whiskey, enthusiastic about the whiskey, not trying to like sell us some we uh, take care of our casks in this old warehouse with the finest, you know, I just, uh, I don't know what you guys think about that, but you just sort of get a little bit over it. Um, Aaron's real good for that as well, just to the point. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys have really enjoyed this stream. Um, this was really kind of a test. It was a last minute thing. Um, it's really good to have you guys come join. Um, is there anything you guys want to talk about? Any more questions? I'll just jump quickly into the chat. Um, so where was I? Big, uh, yeah, can you recommend your favorite lowland whiskey? Good question. There's some blood knocks, which are pretty good. Uh, is it and there's a few distilleries though starting? Is it King's Barns? No, it's Lockley. Which one's the lowland one? My brain's not working. I need more coffee. Um, I think traditionally, uh, Bladnock has some good releases from the Lowlands, but some of those newer distilleries are really exciting as well. Um, yeah, uh, CMO said there's too much hype in the Glen Cadam 10. It was just okay for me, nothing special. Totally. And that's what I find like uh, it depends on your style you like. If you like ex bourbon cast, more subtle, kind of like you know, more like light fruit, white fruit whiskeys, Glen Cannon tea might be for you. Um, if you're more into sherry cask, that could be different. Uh, if you're more into those characterful malts, if you're into smoke, we're all into different things. Um, I can see why people think it is. It is, and to be honest, it is kind of a simple malt, which is why I kind of, not simple, it's light. It's light, um, you know, and that's why I recommend it as a summer whiskey. It's not one that's kind of like going to warm you up, um, but I still love it. I love it. It's kind of, I feel like I'm having like pastry with butter on it. Um, Aaron released a 13-year-old in Holland, Bob says. Small batch, Peter Pinot up 56%. Wow, that sounds really good. From what from that sounds, that sounds awesome. Phil the Legend is back. Thanks. Thanks. I'm glad I'm a legend. A legend that uh, uh, there's only been uh, whispers of and we haven't seen much of, but he's out there somewhere. <laughs> good to be back. Um, I hope I can do more video content for you guys. Um, uh, have you heard of North Star? It is an independent bottler. I have North Star, they got nominated for in Oswa last year. Um, yeah, can't say I've had any. There's only so much whiskey you can have. I feel like no matter how much whiskey I have, it's just like I feel like I've just dipped my toes into the ocean, you know. It's like the more you learn, the more you know, you just don't know. Um, which is great, which is why I love whiskey. You don't quite ever learn it. Um, I'd list it still very tasty. Yes, the Glenlivet list it still very good. I, I liked it. I'm a big fan of it. Um, I know it's Glenlivet and some people kind of not keen on Glenlivet because um, they kind of see it as like a basic malt, but the list it still was not that. I feel accidentally saw your stream. Thanks again for your 15, whis 15 whiskeys video and joined the collection so far. Thank you, Kevin. I'm glad you appreciate that. That was a video I just wanted to make because I felt like your whiskey journey can be a little bit kind of, um, you know, it can be hard to know where to go next. So that's kind of just a, a kind of a rough template. It's not meant to be prescribing, but it can just show you that, 
you know, maybe you've had a few whiskeys and you haven't had a shared carbs whiskey, or if you haven't had a cast drink whiskey, could be something to go. Have you had any Australian whiskey, Ruben says? Yeah, I have had the Hullers. Have I got that here? I haven't had enough Australian whiskey. Um, mainly because of price. It's very expensive. My brothers live in Australia. I might go pick up some more bottles. So no, I'm really excited about the Archie Rose, um, which I do have. They were at Dramfest here in New Zealand. This is a, a Sydney whiskey, I think. And this is actually a new make. So you can't really buy it. So they can't actually call it whiskey. This is actually going to be aged in my cask. If you watch my cask video, where's my cask? My cask. It's somewhere. I still need to get used to my studio. You know, I'm going to age this in my little mini cask, see what I can do with it. Um, what's really interesting is they're using lots of different types of malts, and one of them is like the chocolate kind of malt, um, which is the same one that the Signet uses. The Signet, which is that luxury whiskey I talk about in my essential whiskey videos. And it has that kind of coffee, like chocolate dipped kind of coffee bean kind of note. I just absolutely love. I'd love to see distilleries exploring more of that type of malt. I think it's so interesting and so untapped. And going back to that innovation thing, I think if people, if I was a new distillery, you know, and I was just to pick a lane, like how are we different? Just do like chocolate malt. I want coffee styled whiskey. That'd be great. Whiskey that tastes like coffee. Like um, these guys mix six malts, but um, so it's a bunch of different malts, but I do get that same kind of chocolatey coffee mm -hmm. note even in this new Mac. Um, and I tried some of the like recent expressions at Dramfest and I was, I was impressed. Thanks. Looking forward to your next broadcast. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Good to have you in. Have you tried milk and honey to at Tel Aviv? No, no. Uh, didn't that win like whiskey of the year and some whiskey awards or something? Uh, I really want to try that. Um, I'm always skeptical about whiskey awards, like international ones where like they give out hundreds of awards. Um, some of them are better than others though. Um, I just, just be aware when you guys get a whiskey and it's got a sticker on it and say they won an award, it doesn't actually mean a lot. Um, certain awards mean something, but just be a little bit skeptical because some of them give out hundreds and hundreds of awards. Um, so yeah, I am now going to go get back to it, back to editing, back to making more videos. Really good to have you guys in. Absolutely appreciate it all you guys. Um, watching back, join the stream. Uh, I know it was a little bit late notice, but great to have you guys all in. Thanks for all your good questions. And hopefully we can do some more of these if you're keen on doing more like live stream videos. Um, that would be cool. So see you guys later. Share and enjoy. Cheers, beauty. See ya. More videos hopefully soon. <laughs>